Hello, my name is Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems, and I'd like to demonstrate Adobe Photoshop Touch running here on an iPad 2. But I'd also like to mention it runs just as well on an Android device. Let's get started. As you see here in Adobe Photoshop Touch, I'm in the main window where I can select my images. I can also go to the upper left corner here, and I can look at a great selection of tutorials that are built right into Photoshop Touch. Let's go back over to my main window, and let's start a project from one of the images I currently have here displayed. I'm going to go ahead and click right here. Now, Adobe Photoshop Touch is designed to let you bring multiple images into your document, layered images, adjust those images, apply professional effects, and then share the results with your friends and family. It's really great. Here I have my original background image, and I like to bring in some additional images to blend into this background. As you can see here in the upper left-hand corner, I click on this first icon where I have a resource of all of my images. To begin with, I'm starting up here at the top with my local photos, all the photos that I've placed onto my iPad directly. I can choose from those. I can go to the Adobe Creative Cloud where I can select images here. I can import images through my camera built into the iPad 2 or a Google search. I really love the ability to go in and adjust the settings for different types of images I'm looking for, including searching for images which are copyright free or searching for images with different colors, as you can see here. So you can adjust your search to find just the images you might want to use in combination with some of your projects. Finally, I have a lot of images on Facebook and I want to go to one of those images and bring it into a project. So I can go directly to Facebook by logging into my Facebook account and adding those. Let's go back to my Creative Cloud in this case. And I want to bring in an image right here of the Mad Hatter. Right here, I select it and I say Add. It downloads that from the Adobe Creative Cloud and applies it as a second layer here in my project. I'm going to go ahead and move this down a bit then scale it up just like this. Notice that I'm constraining and snapping the edges of my project down here. I can click Done. Now one of the beauties of working with Adobe Photoshop Touch is that it has some amazing masking capabilities. Up here at the top, you can see my different tools. You can see my editing tools, my selection tools, my move tools here, my adjustments, and effects here. And then finally, some of my favorite tools here under the ampersand are my more set of tools, cropping, adjusting text, warping. OK. Over here to the left are the tools I'm going to use for making the selection for this mask. The tool I'm going to use right here at the top is selected down here, and it's called the Scribble Select tool right here. With the Scribble Select tool, I first go in and assign those areas that I'd like to keep. Check this out. I select the areas like this, moving around the image. I'm defining the inside area of the image just like this, all the way around, and finish off. Then I select Remove over here on the left. And I go in and I parallel the path around the object. I can move outside the screen and continue moving around. It does an amazing job of making a selection. Now, here's a little area down here that didn't quite get selected. So what you do is you use both fingers and you can then zoom in. Then I'm going to go back over and remove areas by once again zooming in here and isolating area. Now check this out, a great feature. As you zoom in, the size of your brush reduces in size for more detail so you can get into the smaller sections of your image. I'm going to use my two fingers again and bring this down in size so I can see it within the image area. Now I go over to my Selection menu, down to the bottom to Refine Edge. A similar tool can be found in Adobe Photoshop. But I want to refine the edges here along the hair, here, the feather in the hat, and maybe in the feather down below. 
Just click on those, it re-refines and redesigns the edge so it's soft in those areas around the hair and hard edge near the areas of the jacket and the finger. I click OK. This is amazing. It's quick, it's easy, it has selected this region. We now go up to the Edit menu and we can now do a simple extract. Check this out. <laughs> Bingo! It drops that out. There's nothing faster, nothing easier, and that's the key to success in Adobe Photoshop Touch here on the iPad 2. It's simplicity, speed, and accuracy for a quick project. Okay, we finished that off. That looks great. I can go ahead and go to my selection menu and deselect. So you've seen some great capabilities with masking. I can go in and add different effects, for example, um, adjustments or even effects here to stylize my image, but I want to bring in one more layer. I want to show you a great capability where I can mask areas out. Once again, I'm going back to my menu here, and I want to bring in an additional image of this texture, and let's add that in. Once again, it's automatically letting me scale this, because as you bring objects in initially, it lets you scale them, you click Done. Now look at the three layers here. I can turn the layers visibility on and off, or I can even move and adjust the position of the layers, much like Photoshop. But again, like Photoshop, I can go to this menu right here and select my Blend Mode. This is fantastic, because I can set the Blend Mode for that layer to overlay. Check it out. I'm blending this textured layer into my background to give it a whole new color mood. But I think the adjustment's a little bit too heavy on this incredibly good-looking model, so I'm going to target that layer, and let's go back in to my ampersand, my more adjustments here, and let's add a fade right here, one of the great new features. Check it out. Masking is easy. I target the position and size of the area I'd like to mask. I can move it easily. I can position it right over here. I'm using the set of predefined masks, or I can build my own mask, and I click Done. So it's like creating a little donut hole right through this layer, and if I turn the visibility off on these other layers, you can see the transparency through there. Really fantastic. Let's finish this off with some text. I just want you to see in this first demo that we can add in text. I bring in some text that I've installed here earlier. I can position that text and scale its size just like this. I have a variety of fonts that I can choose from that are built right into Adobe Photoshop Touch. If I click on the text, I can edit it, but let's continue forward and add some different styles and effects to this text. I position that like that. Let's get it right down there and click on my checkbox to apply that setting. Then let's go back up to my effects, and let's put a glow on the outside of that. I can adjust the glow, the intensity, and apply it. Finally, let's finish this off with one last effect that I really like, and that's the ability to warp any of your layers. Clicking on Warp, let's just warp this up a little bit like this, and click Done. We've finished our project. We have all our layers. I covered just a few of the items available here inside of Adobe Photoshop Touch on the iPad 2. It's really fantastic. Give it a try.